The Aswan High Dam, Nasser's Responsibilities Destroying Native Rights The Three Gorges Dam in China, built in 2008, displaced over 1.24 million residents. The ongoing project of the Belo Monte Dam in Brazil has already displaced over 20,000 people. When will societies learn from the history of the Aswan Dam that potential catastrophic and deadly impact on their own people must be thoroughly investigated and considered before forging ahead with industrialization projects. In July 1952, Gamel Adbel Nasser came to power in Egypt as a result of the Egyptian Revolution. Once in power, Nasser took on the responsibility of industrializing the nation. The most controversial industrial modernization of Nasser's reign was the building of the Aswan High Dam. Although this project utilized the Nile's water for hydroelectric power, irrigation, and flood control, it led to substantial displacement and disruption of the indigenous people, in particular the Nubians. Nasser disregarded his responsibilities to Egypt's native people by denying them agrarian rights. The current Nubian people are still suffering a lack of rights caused by Egypt's industrialization. The Nubian people are an indigenous ethnic group in northern Africa. They have been known to be peaceful people living in isolated, simplistic communities. Nubians take great pride in their cultural heritage through their ancient temples and monuments. Evidence of the Nubian people trace back 300,000 years ago. They originated along the banks of the Nile as their own nation called ancient Nubia until consumed into modern-day southern Egypt and northern Sudan's borders. The majority of the population live in Aswan and were the ethnic minority. Professor Hassan from University College London explains, quote, The Nubians do not belong to a race. They consist of populations characterized by distinguishing cultural traditions, unquote. The Nubians were displaced several times in the early 20th century, but their land and rights remained unharmed until Nasser, the second president, completely stripped both their lands and rights away. Prior to the Egyptian Revolution of 1952, Egypt was ruled by a constitutional monarchy. The revolution was led by a political movement called the Free Officers Party. One lead member was Gamal Adbel Nasser. It abolished monarchy, an aristocracy, replacing it with a one-party republic. After the revolution, Nasser became president in 1956. Nasser then took on the responsibilities of industrializing the nation. Flowing south to north, the Nile is the longest river in the world. Every year, the Nile had fluctuated flooding, which was the source of the land's great fertility. The floods were unreliable, though, and years with excessive flooding, or years with drought, brought devastation to the growing population. In the last 100 years, the population has steadily been increasing, at a remarkable rate. And yet, the vast majority live on the banks of the Nile, which makes up only 4% of the land. The oldest inhabitants on the banks of the Nile are the Nubian people. Throughout history, there has been many attempts to harness the Nile's power. Because of Nasser's initiative to modernize Egypt, he made it his responsibility to build a dam. The planning of the Aswan High Dam began in 1954. The only factor stopping immediate construction was the funding. In the midst of the Cold War between the Soviet Union and the United States, Egypt was neutral and hoped to use the war in order to obtain the money needed. The United States feared the rise of communism in Northern Africa and the Middle East, so they were willing to contribute $300 million. Furthermore, Nasser looked to modernize Egypt's military and sought out the United States again. The U.S. refused to supply Egypt with the arms that could be used in combat. Nasser disapproved of the restrictions on the arms and denied the offer. He then looked to the Soviet Union for aids and weapons. The USSR agreed to provide Egypt with the necessary arms. The U.S., surprised by this outcome, pulled all of their funding towards the Aswan High Dam. At this point, Nasser turned to the Soviets for funding of not only the weapons, but also the Aswan Dam project. In 1960, President Kamal Abdel Nasser pulled a lever and ignited 10 tons of dynamite to blast Egypt into a new age of prosperity. Instead of prosperity, the $1 billion barrage across the Nile has produced what may be calamity, stated David Lancashire of Cairo. 
The dam's construction started January 9, 1960 and took 10 years to complete. It stretches about 2.5 miles long and 364 feet tall. The dam created a reservoir, Lake Nasser, that provides water for irrigation purposes. The dam created 2.5 million acres of land that could now be irrigated year-round. The dam also helps to alleviate the crisis of droughts because of the stored water at Lake Nasser. The dam has 12 generators that in total produce 10 billion kilowatts. At its maximum capacity, the dam produced electricity for more than half of Egypt's population, which was 45 million people at the time. So usually, you know, in these projects, there are two major prices. One is the social cost of, you know, displaced rural population who inhabit, you know, the valleys, which later becomes, you know, reservoirs for these large dams. And the second is, you know, history of that region that also, you know, suffers. But, you know, but states in the Middle East, usually, they uh, are willing to take this risk because they are in perhaps, you know, in a hurry to modernize and industrialize. The creation of the Aswan High Dam profoundly affected the Nubian population. It caused their displacement and took away their rights to their native land, which now lies beneath Lake Nasser. Hafsa Sakos from the University of Bergen, Norway states, quote, In these projects, the people displaced were not consulted. Their consent was not sought. An adequate compensation and favorable resettlement was not given. Instead, the affected people were either forcefully displaced to resettlement sites in the desert, or, resisting this, forced to settle in the barren land next to the reservoirs." Unquote. The dams led to the Nubian exodus in which 70,000 people in Egypt and 50,000 people in Sudan were displaced. In Sudan, those who attempted to oppose the result of the dam were imprisoned, chased, shot at, and even killed. The dams Lake Nasser caused crucial Nubian temples and monuments to have to be relocated. Before Lake Nasser could be created, Nasser had to move all 22 temples and monuments according to the United Nations to avoid conflict. Yet Nasser ignored his responsibility to the Nubians' heritage, so they had to be moved by the Nubian Campaign, which was an operation to save important Nubian artifacts. The Aswan High Dam had many immediate downfalls other than the displacement of the Nubians. It also caused salt buildup in the soil which causes land to become barren quickly. The shore began to quickly erode, which caused them to have to reinforce the banks. The stagnant water in Lake Nasser caused the increased threat of waterborne diseases such as parasites. Quote, We knew all about the problems of the Aswan High Dam before it was built, but we did not dare talk about them in Nasser's day. The dam was a symbol and criticizing it was dangerous. Unquote. Professor Bichet of the American University of Cairo. Because their ancestral lands were flooded by the creation of the Aswan High Dam, the Nubians were relocated between Wadi Halfa and Aldab, a region which is mostly desert. This further divided the Nubian group, separating their culture, which causes thousands of years of ancient Nubia to be forgotten. In order to continue Egypt's urbanization, the government is still taking away land from them, in this case, to build hotels. <laughs> Many Nubians today are still furious about former President Nasser's executive decision to create the Aswan High Dam, knowingly destroying the land of the ancient Nubians. There are still many activists in Egypt who are fighting for the right to return to their homeland. The Aswan High Dam has been one of the key controversial components in Nasser's industrialization plan for Egypt, who rose to power from the 1952 Egyptian Revolution. The dam has benefited Egypt by providing the nation with hydropower, flood control, and irrigation. Although the Egyptians reaped these benefits, it led to the displacement and disruption of the native people, the Nubians. By creating the dam, Nasser disregarded his responsibility as a leader to provide his native population with proper agrarian rights as well as rights to their heritage. From this large neglect in history, leaders of ongoing and future dam constructions need to realize and consider the impact on their own people's rights 
before continuing to industrialize their nation.